Welcome to Chicago Independent Television, a show independent of corporate and commercial interests. We show Chicago area grassroots media and provide an open space for locally produced media. I'm Mitchell Szczepańczyk, and I'm standing in front of the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago's South Side. In this episode of our show, we'll go to St. Louis for actions around the 2005 National Conference for Media Reform. We'll also pay a visit to the Taste of Chicago to join activists involved in outreach peace actions. And we'll also see a selection of films from Street Level Youth Media, an inner city youth media program in Chicago. Stay with us. So what's really exciting to me is that the Books Not Bombs Day of Action, along with the Healthcare Day of Action, really are about demanding a new set of priorities. And it's really a way to, to bring in lots of different groups and to bring in lots of different causes. Um, and really, I think, drawing really clear connections between money being spent in Iraq, money being spent in Afghanistan, and the loss of services in the US. Um, 4.4 million people in the US without health care. Students' education is in a crisis right now. Healthcare is in a crisis right now, and these are really important issues that affect people in the U.S. that aren't, aren't being addressed at all because of the war. By the time this child graduates from high school, her brain will have absorbed 350,000 television commercials, 100,000 alcohol ads, and a daily barrage of sex and violence. If that doesn't turn you off, then nothing will. A message from the Media Foundation. Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. Thousands of media activists of all stripes, including many Chicagoans, gathered in St. Louis for the 2005 National Conference for Media Reform to discuss assorted media issues and what to do about them. But this conference wasn't just all talk, as we'll see in this next segment. For a weekend in mid-May 2005, the Millennium Hotel in St. Louis, Missouri played host to the 2005 National Conference for Media Reform, a gathering of more than 2,500 activists, journalists, educators, officials, and concerned citizens discussing the problem of the media in the United States and what to do about it. In plenary sessions, caucuses, action clinics, and speeches. Those who doubted the future of freedom behind the Iron Curtain, let them come to Berlin. Tonight we say to any who doubt the future of free media in America, let them come to St. Louis. We're going up against one of the most powerful lobbies in this country. And these guys aren't going to throw dandy lines at us when we come after them. I've made a career studying these guys, and believe me, they take us very seriously. We know now they take us seriously. They're planning for us now as they plan how to do their deliberations in Washington. And we have to understand that and prepare for that. One highlight of the conference was the Media Democracy Showcase, which featured more than 75 media and activist organizations from around the world. and challenge they did. Exhibit A. Staff and supporters of the daily newscast Democracy Now! spent part of the first day of the conference in outreach efforts to promote the show's airing on local St. Louis radio. Exhibit B. On the Friday morning preceding the conference, a group of activists assembled two blocks away from the conference at the offices and studios of St. Louis's CBS affiliate. Their mission? To view the station's public files, the record of correspondence the station keeps with the public. This is key. Well, I can't move it out of the area. Oh, 
on the app writer. This is our uh, this is our public file. Okay. okay. Try to get some room here for you. This is a key of the public file. Okay. okay. Do you want we can look at that if you want. I'll show you. But uh, here's here's a one here. row one, two, and three. This is the uh, this Can is the political yeah. 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 That'll tell you operator. kind of basically where things are, but if you've got certain things in mind, I can just open it up and, and uh, pull it out for you. So oh, um there's a, you know, if you have a file for as well on any kind of uh, public complaints, you know, any email or oh well, I have mail or I have place. drawers of uh, yeah, mail. of email. Of email, okay. Yeah, okay. We, the days <laughs> the days when they used to do regular mail, right. you know, we could keep email. Everybody emails everything. Mm -hmm. So so you did, but you, you just you, you do a print copy of print and okay, copy. Okay, so yeah. there's. Yeah. So even if we could just get a sense of uh, sure. Maybe Here's the most, two, my okay. office is right here. Okay. So you can money just say I'm done and I'll put it right back in. Okay, cool. okay. <clears throat> Great. Thank you. Okay. Can we go see. back to that page first. Right. Yeah. Do you want a chair? Here, I got an extra. And uh, you can see that they've you want taken in... Uh, I'll go ahead and go for it. <laughs> 63,707 <laughs> for the White River yes. Casino. And I'm just yes. going to go through this. <clears throat> just a listing of their uh, shows that they've submitted. As a, so there's um, the Backyardians. There's the Door of the Explorer. Little Bill. At the Zoo. Lazy Town. And Miss... Spiders, Sunny, Patch, Friends. Those are the shows, all of them. So there's, you know, there's just a rep repetition after page seven. But what's interesting about these is that it gives, you know, a, it gives a description of the show, which age group it targets, you know, and then how this is educational for children. Uh, so, like in this case of the Miss Spider's Sunny Patch Friends, it says the educational objectives of the program are to help children learn the value of being part of loving, supportive family and understand the role of family and friends as they begin to engage in new personal and social experiences beyond the home. So, it's a good thing for people to kind of then look at those shows and determine whether or not they fulfill those obligations or not. Hmm. Zero. What do we have? Uh, I know that these are now looking at the move on buys, like and it looks like move on actually bought just to be able to get the 15, listing and the, the, um, you know, the uh, description of how it's uh, in uh, April of uh, 2004. Uh, function and serves and what's going on. 28,550 in. Are you going to copy? Yeah. Do you just want to copy? Yeah, that's a problem. Seven. In July, uh, in June of last year, thirty-two thousand. Boy, so move on. Spent a, quite a bit of money here. Thirty-two thousand seven hundred twenty-five. Yeah, I mean, just take a look and see if you think. Fifteen thousand. Election campaign, and here we find that some clear-cut evidence of a coordinated campaign to force for Dan Rather off the air. <laughs> If you allow Dan Rather to anchor your network coverage of any of the three presidential so debates beginning with September 30, 2004, you will have lost my family's allegiance to your network forever. Dear station manager, please get rid of Dan Rather. Why is it taking so long? Pretty self-explanatory. Sometimes. <laughs> okay, each one of these is on the program. Yeah, each one of these is on the program. All right. Um, well, here's one. Uh, you got a Differential candidate arrested. Sure. Yeah, one would think this particular headline would make its way through the news media with the speed of a brush power. However, it is not. The fact the news network did not cover the story behind Michael Badnarik's arrest before the final televised presidential debate affirms my suspicions that a fair and balanced coverage is exclusively reserved for members of the two major parties. I have heard and heard the reasoning that the Libertarian Green and other independent candidates are not allowed coverage on CBS's news coverage because there is not enough popular support in your viewership to warrant covering their debates or even their campaigns. In a manner of speaking, you are correct in that judgment as one of the people that supports the inclusion of all candidates in, there, in the uh, media coverage. Uh, I will no longer watch your programming and will explain to everyone I know that they should shun your fair and balanced news broadcasts as well. Thank you for your time.
But here we have <laughs> more attacks on Dan Rather, and there seems to be just reams and reams of them. CBS News has reached a new low. Dan Rather should be kicked off the air. Why is the liar, misspelled L-I-E-R, Dan Rather, still on your station? I think Dan Rather should be at a minimum publicly reprimanded with meaningful consequences. Why is Dan Rather still on the air? You've lost my respect and will never regain support as long as personnel such as Dan Rather are in your employ. I was fully expecting there to be serious consequences for Dan Rather's poor journalistic standards. Find anyone but the biased Dan Rather to anchor debates. What are you going to do to remove Dan Rather? It's, just, it's clearly part of a coordinated campaign. Um, Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brent Bozell's Media Research Center probably is behind the Parents it. Television the Parents Council. Parents Television yeah. Council, but his 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 other group, the mm -hmm. Media Research uh, Center, they're behind coordinating this campaign. Yeah. So, it's it, but it's interesting to see the evidence that in fact they did flood you guys yeah. with uh, the trees. With the, the trees that um, put in the door. Right. <laughs> with with mail. Look at the lead sentence on each. Look at the lead sentence on each one. Dan Rather has to go. Dan Rather, Dan Rather, Dan Rather, Dan Rather. Well, happy people today, I guess. Last year. He's going. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Uh, oh, we're just, we're just looking at the public file. All right, good. Reams and reams of, of, of email urging the station to get the <laughs> matter off the bed. It just shows how far. It shows. We have a You're watching Chicago Independent Television. Our economy is in trouble. Our education system is failing. Our cities have become war zones. And our planet is in distress. But instead of reaching out for solutions, we reach for another potato chip and zap another channel. Snap out of it, America. A message from the Media Foundation.